Hello, 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 and welcome to my first tutorial video on computing. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of a mix. Uh, I'm starting off doing tutorials uh, on Tutor Hunt. Um, so this is uh, aimed at uh, being supplementary material for that. So let's get straight into it, shall we? So we're going to do um, a very basic example. Um, as you can see here, I've pulled up the uh, teacher's handbook for the GCSE 2012 uh, syllabus for computing. So that's uh, J275. And in here we've got quite a nice um, tutorial here, or quite a nice problem, should I say, um, which is shown here by this uh, pseudocode. Um, but in essence, it's a very basic project where you enter a password. Um, so we, we do some inputting of data and then we do some checking of that data and give some um, meaningful results out at the other end. So in general, we've got to input a password that's between uh, 6 and 12 characters long. Uh, make sure that it satisfies that. And then if it does, we're going to check that there is uh, at least one uppercase, one lowercase, uh, and one number in there as well. Sorry, I'm being a bit distracted. The cat is about to cause carnage on one of my bookshelves. Pippa, get down. You pain in the butt. She's probably going to feature heavily in these videos with me shouting at her. Um, and then what we're going to do is, based upon some data here we're going to assess whether this is a strong password a medium password or a weak password we'll define it as strong if it contains uppercase lowercase and a number medium if it only contains two of those three and weak if it only contains one of those three now i must stress that anyone watching with a little bit more programming knowledge and well more computer science knowledge you'll know full well that that's not a uh, particularly good measure of whether a password is strong, medium or weak um, because passwords like this can just be uh, subject to dictionary attacks and so on and so forth but that is beyond the scope of this particular uh, tutorial this is supposed to be aimed at the very first time you ever start programming so we can see a nice little uh, flow chart. This is a good way of starting programming yourself. So I would uh, encourage anyone who's learning uh, to have a, a notepad and a pen and um, try and visualize the problem uh, as a bunch of bite-sized broken up steps. So here we are, just to explain this, we're starting at the top. We're gonna input the password, that's a thing. We're gonna check, is it greater than six or equal to six, should I say? Um, is it less than or equal to 12 in terms of its length? Um, assuming that's the case, then we're going to check for uppercase, lowercase and numbers and then output this uh, strength here. And this is uh, it in sort of what they call pseudocode. Personally, I don't particularly like that. Um, but if it helps you, there it is on the screen, pause the video and digest that. So we'll get straight into it then. Um, I'm going to be using Python for this particular tutorial. Um, it's nice and easy to use. Uh, it's You can get it for free as well, mind you most program software is free, but there's, uh, there's a good um, online uh, what's called an IDE, so an integrated development environment. Basically what that means is that you can go to this website, repel.it um, or repel.it, uh, slam that into your browser bar here um, or into Google and it will uh, it'll ask you to log in, it's all free and everything. Then you can pick what language and you can use all sorts of different languages on, on here. It's fantastic. Uh, and you write your code in this white box here. Hello, Pip. Um, and then on the right hand side, this will be the output. And as you can see, they're actually running it um, in, a, in Linux here. So you can put this straight onto a Raspberry Pi, onto a desktop or laptop if you've got a Linux distro on there. Um, certain extent you can possibly run it on some mobile phones as well um, but let's do it in the browser let's keep things dead dead simple so 
first of all, what do we want to do? Well, we want to be able to input a password. Now, in Python, there is a function called input. And we, and we know it's a function because it has an open and a closed bracket after it, like that. So that tells us that within that word input, we've called it input, or should I say the Python devs have called it input, it's going to do some stuff for us. So if I run that, you can see the cursors come down here. I could type something in here now and hit enter. And this is telling us what we just typed in. Right, that's a start. We want to save that though, don't we? And how we do that is we assign it to what's called a variable. Now, um, let's call this my underscore password equals whatever we just typed in there. Now you'll notice I've used an underscore here if you're not familiar with programming. Variables and things like that cannot have spaces in them. It's got to be one continuous string of characters as it is here. So my password or one word would be correct. Capital P is another style of doing this. But we're going to stick to uh, stick to this style here. So let's run that again. And let's just type in some gobbledygook there. Now interestingly it's not displayed that to screen. Why? Well, this particular environment um, with Python, if you don't assign it, so if you've just got a function that's out in the open, uh, like we had here, then it will print that to the screen because you've not assigned it to anything. But we're assigning it to my password here. Now, if I want that to show on the screen, I want to print it. Print is also a function. It's a predefined function. It highlights it nicely in blue there. And I want to print my password. And that's going to print it to the screen. It doesn't pull it up on your printer and start reeling off pages there. So, blah, blah. And then it prints it to the screen here. So that's what it's done in this function. Now, the output of this isn't particularly clear. It's not obvious that it's asking you to input something. So what we can do is we can actually pass what's got a string of characters or a sentence or a word or something like that to the input function and it will display that on the screen for us. So for example, please enter your oops, password. Now I've put it in double quotes here, that's important and that tells it that it's a string of letters. So that means we can have spaces in here. Now if I hit run, it says here, please enter your password. And I'm going to key in some gobbledygook. And then it outputs it to the screen. Now, this isn't particularly obvious. What is that? Well, it is obvious here because we can see it's consecutive. But it's not very clear. We don't really understand what's going on. So it's very useful to tell the user who doesn't have this white screen to the left of it so they can see the code. So can, they can tell them what it is that you're putting in here. So let's do a string. Your password is. And then we're going to add my password to it. This is the first learning thing really for Python. What we're doing is this is a string of words, this is a string of words saved here, and if we add them together it does what's called a concatenation. It sticks them together. It's not add like one add one is two, because these aren't numbers. These are strings. So it's going to add this string to this string. Should be fairly obvious, hopefully, what is going to happen here. Your password is, like we've got there, and then it adds this string to the end of it. And that's exactly what we've got here. So, what have we achieved so far? Well, we've taken some data that the user has input, 
It's not part of the code. This is fresh data. And we've saved it so we can do stuff with it. And we've managed to output it to the screen. OK. What else do we need to do? We need to check that it is greater than or equal to six characters in length. Now, there's another Python function that we can use called len, short for length. And we want to do the length of my password. Now, if I print this to the screen, and hit run, Ooh, we get 12. That just so happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, 12 characters long. Fantastic. So what have we got here now? Well, we know that that passes to the number 12 in this particular case. What it actually passes to is the length of whatever... Uh, the string is that the user input, or the number of characters, the number of letters, numbers, space bars, whatever that might have been. So we can do something with that. So let's do my password length is equal to, uh, let's learn how to spell, shall we? My password length is equal to length of my password and then what we're going to do is we're going to print this to the screen now you know that that is equal to that which is what we originally had in here so it should output the same so nothing should have changed here 14 in this case 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 excellent so now, in the code, we know the length of this password. And we want to check that. So, let's learn a new statement. If. One of the most useful statements in all programming. It's, it, it defines um, all computer science, really. If you couldn't do this particular statement, um, you couldn't really do anything with computers, they wouldn't really exist. It's, it's a comparison. Now the syntax, the way you type it, depending on the language, changes. But in Python we do it like this. If my password length is greater than or equal to six colon print Password is long enough. We don't need that. So let's run this. Please enter your password. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten characters long. So that's going to go to ten. It's going to check, is 10 greater than or equal to 6? Yes. Well, because it's an if statement, if true, or if yes, then it's going to print this. Password is long enough. Okay, so what if it's not true? That's only four characters doesn't print this because that was false so it just skipped it ignored it so what we can do though is we can do else so that is if this is not true this statement here is not true then we can do print password is too short so run it again three characters this time oh no password is too short and just to prove that if it is over six characters password is long enough so we can do things now conditional if this is true we can do some stuff in here it doesn't have to be a print statement it could be anything we want it to be okay 
What else do we need to do? Well, we need to check that it is less than or equal to 12 characters. So we've got a bound here. It's got to be more, uh, effectively more than 5 and less than 13. Or greater than or equal 6, less than or equal to 12. Now we could do that as another if statement here. If my password length is less than or equal to 12, then we can do print password is OK in length. OK, so what are we doing here? If it is greater than six, greater than or equal to 6, assume that's true. If it is less than or equal to 12, assume that's true, then password is OK in length. If it's not less than or equal to 12, we need to tell the user. Oops. Print password too long. So if that evaluates to false, it's going to say this. If that evaluates to false, it's going to say this. Notice the indentation. That's really important. Doesn't matter how big the indentation is. In fact, in this, it's only two spaces. Commonly, you would use four spaces. Don't use tabs. Um, simple reason being different uh, systems evaluate a tab to a different distance so it can really mess up your code. Stick with spaces because they are defined and they can only be one space. Let's try this out then. Please enter your password. Let's do one that's really short. A. Password is too short. Good. So password length was not greater than or equal to 6. So we got this result here. Let's make it longer than 12. Password is too long. So this was true. It was greater than or equal to 6, but it was not less than or equal to 12. So we got this statement. Now let's do it somewhere in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Password is OK in length. Awesome. There's another way of doing this, though. We can combine statements. So this is quite good. It's a bit wordy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code there. For me, that's a bit too long. It just it, it just takes ages to go through your code when we start making this really long. What we really want to do is do it in a single line. But we can do this as the complete opposite of what we've done here. So let's do it one step at a time. If my password length is less than 6, and let's get rid of this for the moment, then it's too short. OK. Else, oops, get rid of, oh, get rid of the indent there. So this means that it's got to be greater than or equal to 6 in this case. So now we want to check that it's uh, if it's greater than 12. If my, oops, my password length is greater than 12, print password too long. Oops, there we go. else and if we get here the password's got to be okay so what have we done here well we're now checking the negative so we're not checking that it fits in our bracket we're checking if it fits outside our bracket and you'll see that reads a little bit nicer 
what we're doing is we're finding problems rather than finding things that are correct. That's really useful because if you want to add in, for example, an extra check to make sure um, that the password conforms, normally what we're saying is, is there something wrong with it? We're not normally asking, is there something right with it? So this actually makes more logical sense. And what it also does is it puts our OK at the end rather than at the start. So it's a lot easier to read. But we can do this even better. In fact, let's just prove this works first of all. Password is too short. Password is too long. Password length is OK. So it does exactly the same. But it's easier to read. And that's very important. We can make this even shorter though, and even easier to read. We can do all the checks in one go. If my password length is less than six, or my password length is greater than 12, so it's outside of the bounds that we define as OK, print, oops, password must be longer than 5 but less than 12, sorry 13. Else print password length OK. Ah, here we go. So the password was too short. It must be longer than 5, but less than 13. All right. Let's try and do it too long. Oh, wrong button. Same error message. It's given us a lot more information in that error message. And we've reduced it to four lines of code. And let's just prove it does work for the correct case. Password length is OK. Awesome. Now, we want to stop the code running if the password's not OK at this point. We don't want to move any further on because it would make no sense to. There's no point in checking whether there's uppercase, lowercase, numbers and so on if the password's invalid in the first place. So we need to exit the code. Now this isn't trivial actually. So just pay attention and watch. At the start of the code, we need to include a library, and that's the system library. Uh, sorry, I was right the first time. Getting confused between my languages. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. It's import. There we go. Ha. You'll have this problem when you start coming to learn loads of different languages. You'll forget what word it is. Um, so import sys. Don't worry too much about that. But what it means we can do now is I can run the function sys.exit. And what that does is it closes the program down. Just like hitting the X in the corner of the screen in Windows. So let's give that a go. There we are. And it's exited the code now. It's not gone any further. To prove that, let's say print code still running. Oops. 
No bad double clicked. There we go. We didn't get there. It didn't print this line here. But if we do satisfy this function, this never executes. We go straight onto the else. That's about six. Code's still running. There we go. So if we're not, if we don't have a bad password, we can continue on with the code. So let's do that. So what we want to do now then is we want to check whether or not there's any uppercase, lowercase or numbers. Hmm. We need a new statement. And for this we want to check each of the characters. So the G first, then the F, then the D, then the S, so on and so forth, in turn. How do we do that? Well, in Python, it's really easy. We want to do for character, for example, you can call this whatever you want, in my password. And then we're going to do some stuff. This is called an iterator. It's going to look at my password and it sees my password as one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different constituent parts. For any players who are good at programming, you'll know that's not strictly true, but let's say it's eight for now. And it's going to first of all say, well, character is a variable, is G. And then it's going to run anything below here, and then when it's finished, It'll go to the next one. Character will then become F, and then D, and then S, and then so on and so forth in turn, until we hit the end of the string, and then it will break out. So let's first of all see if it's an uppercase character. So one way of doing this, we're going to do a condition. So if character is equal to now we're asking a question here, so it's a double equal sign. We're not saying it is, we're asking is it character dot upper. That's a function we can apply, and all it does is it turns that character into an uppercase character. If it's already an uppercase, it doesn't nothing happens. So if the character is the same as that character converted to uppercase. And that's only going to be true if it was uppercase to start with. Then we want to do something. So we want to change a bit of memory here. So let's go to the start. Has uppercase character. Well, at the start, it doesn't. So let's say that starts off being zero. But if a character is uppercase, then we want to change that to one, for example. And we could do a counter. But let's, let's stick with zero and one here. We also want to see if we have a lowercase character. So if character is equal to character dot lower, so that converts it to lowercase if it was uppercase, or if it was already lowercase, it does nothing. Then we want, I've <laughs> just spotted the typo. Then we want to assign a bit of memory has lower case character is one. But this doesn't exist at the moment, so let's copy, paste. So now what's going to happen 
is we're going to go through each of the characters in the password in turn. If at any point one of those characters is equal to that character in uppercase, which can only happen if it was uppercase to start with, then this has uppercase character variable will no longer be zero, it will be one. Okay? Equally, if there's a lowercase character, then this will no longer be zero, it will be equal to one. What if there's two uppercase characters? Well, first time round it will set it to the one, second time round it will set it to one. So, that's fine, it's still going to be one. If this never evaluates to true, so there is never an uppercase character, this will never execute, as we saw before. So it won't be 1 when we get down here, it will still be 0. The last thing we want to do is see if it's a digit. So if character, uh, and there's another nice little function here, is digit. It's a capital, we'll find out shortly. Has number is equal to one. Has number is equal to zero. There we go. So if the character is a digit, this will be true. If it isn't a digit, it will be false, and this will never execute. So, let's print these numbers out. So we're going to print as uppercase character, and then we can do comma, and we can print as lowercase character, and a comma, and then we're going to do as number. So, let's see what happens. Let's do only lowercase characters. Got to make sure it's more than 6, less than 12. Sorry, more than 5, less than 13. Aha! We have an error. Jolly good. Trace back, oh, most recent call, we will file line 22. Right, that's here. So it tells you where the error is. Attribute error. String object, and don't worry about that for now, has no attributes, is digit. So, is digit is not a valid function. That's because I think it's a lowercase d. So let's try that again. There we are. Password length OK. 0, 1, 0. So that was 0. That was 1. And that, oops. That was 0. So let's have a look at this. Are any of these uppercase? No. So this statement, sorry, this statement was never true. So it's still zero. Never got set to one. Are there lowercase letters? Yes, there are. So this did execute. Actually, it executed oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. But it still only set it to one. And that's what we got. Are there any digits in there? No, there are not. So this was never true, so that's still zero. So let's try it again for a different password. Let's, let's use a proper word here rather than me mashing the keyboard. Aha, 110 one, now. Is there an uppercase character? Yes, there is. The first one's an uppercase. So this fired here and set that variable to one rather than zero. And that's what we see. Are there lowercase? Yes. Are there digits? No. So the final case, we want to go 111. That's a really bad password to have, but in this case, for this particular system, it's actually a good password. Don't ever use that as a real password in real life. Oh man. 111. Are there any uppercase characters? Yes, the first one. So we've got a 1 here. Are there any lowercase? Yeah, there's loads of them. So we've got a 1 there. Are there any digits? Yes, there's two 5s in the middle there. 
So we got a one there. Awesome. We're nearly done. Final thing we need to do is tell the user whether or not this is a good password. And in the problem, good password has been defined as having 111. Okay, so having an upper, having a lower, and having a digit. So. What can we do with this information? Well, we can add them together. So let's say total is equal to has upper plus has lower plus has number. Now, let's have a think about this. When we did that addition with the strings before, the string of words, when we added them together, it concatenated the string, so it put the two words back to back. These aren't words, these are numbers. So we can do a mathematical addition. Python just works this out for you. It goes, oh, okay, these are numbers, so I'm just gonna add them together. So in that last case, it's gonna say, right, well, that's one, add one, add, one. So total is going to equal three. So let's see if that works. Let's do the same example again. Oops. Password. We get three. Great stuff. Three, or having all three of these in this case, we define as a strong password. So, if total is equal to 3, remember we're using the double equals because we're asking a question, then print strong. Okay? If total is equal to 2, print medium and if total is equal to one print weak that's what the problem asked us to do so let's run this let's do a strong password first of all Strong! Yay! How cool is that? Let's do one that's only got a combination of two of those. So we've got a capital and we've got lowercase. Oh, it's only medium. How about if we did only lowercase and numbers? Can you guess? Ah! Interesting. We found a bug. Now, that is in this line here. I'm pretty sure. So numbers must be defined as uppercase. Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But this is good. We've tested our code, so important to do, and we found a problem. Now we know that we've got lowercase characters, so that is working fine. We know we've got digits, so that is working fine, but total is equal to three. That can only happen if this is also equal to 1. So we know this is where the bug is. It's not an error. It's doing exactly what we've told it to do. So how can we get around this? Well, let's have a think. If an uppercase... Sorry, if a digit is, for some reason, 
classed as an uppercase character but we only want to check whether it's a letter we need to ignore digits so we can do an AND remember we did an OR here this is an AND this is an AND logic so this has to be true AND what I'm going to write now has to be true as well and character dot is digit so if it's uppercase and it's a digit oh no 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 we don't want to do that we want to do the opposite and not character is digit so what does this do we know this bit is it uppercase and is it a digit but the opposite of that. So if it is a digit, say it's a 5, then this is true. Not true is false. You following? So if that is false, this statement here highlighted, then this will never be true. Because that's true and that's false. The combination of true and false is false. So this will never fire. And that's exactly what we wanted it to do. If it isn't a digit, so that's false. The opposite of false is true. So that means that's true. So if it's uppercase and it's not a digit, true and true is true. So this will fire now. So let's try it this time. Medium! Hey, we fixed the bug. Awesome. That shows how important it is to test your code and to test it thoroughly. Uh, and finally, so we've done strong, we've done medium. Oh, we didn't do uppercase and digit. So let's try that. We've got another bug. So we now have only capitals and only numbers. So capitals or uppercase, so that's true, so that, that's right, that's doing what it should be doing. We've got numbers, so that's doing what it should be doing. For some reason, this is evaluated to three, which means this must be one. Ah. <laughs> That means that digits must also be lowercase. Oh dear. So a digit is uppercase and a digit is also lowercase. So we've got exactly the same problem. So what we want to make sure when we're checking that it's lowercase, we want to also make sure that it's not a digit. Well, we know how to do that. We've just done it here. There we are. Bug fix. It was the same bug. Just carried forwards. So let's try it again. Yay, medium. That's what we expected. This is no longer going to uh, set has lowercase character to 1 if it is a digit. And then finally we check if it's a digit. And that does that's not broken. We know that isn't broken. But let's check. We want to also look at weak passwords. So only has one of those three. Weak. Good. Let's try another one. Only numbers. Weak. Excellent. Only capitals. Weak. Ta da! I think we've solved the problem. What were we asked to do? Input a password. We can do that. Is the password between 6 and 12 characters long? Yes. Output message and carry on. Ah, I got rid of the output message. So let's put that back in. 
print password length oops is okay no reject and return to stage one ah so we've not actually done this yet but let's come back to that let's come back to that check each character of the password in turn is it uppercase is it lowercase is it a number if three flags are set and strong medium weak well, we've done that so that's what we've done so the only thing we need to do is that at the moment our system just exits the code and stops the program it, it alt f4s it it closes the window but what we actually want to do is return to stage one back to the input a password okay let's think about this so at the moment we exit we don't want to exit what we want to do is return back to this point of the code alrighty I'm going to show you the last um, statement that we're going to use today so I'm going to indent all of that and we're going to use while I'm going to do while true what that means is anything that's indented here it will execute this then this then this then this then this then this and then go back to the start and see oh yeah it's true so it's going to do it again execute 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 and then back to the start and do it again so we're going to get stuck in a loop here over and over and over again and we're never going to go any further because the statement here is always true so if you think of an if statement we could do if character is upper in there which sometimes it would be true sometimes it wouldn't so we could, it would exit this code and then carry on afterwards but let's do while true it's called an infinite loop when do we want to exit this loop we want to exit this loop if the password length is OK. And to exit the loop, we use the statement break. And that jumps out of the loop and then continues on down here. If that statement doesn't execute, i.e. the password length isn't OK, then it's going to go back to the top and start again. So let's try that out. Let's try one that is the correct length. There we are, we get password length is OK, it breaks out of this loop here and then carries on with the next statement which is 4 and then goes down here and then carries on so on and so forth. If the password length is too short, password must be longer than 5 but less than 13, please enter your password. Ah, so it's jumped back up to here automatically and it will keep doing that forever and ever and ever even if I enter a really long password yeah, we've still not hit that break statement so it's going to still keep moaning but if we enter one that does fit within those brackets hey it carries on it knows it's genius now because we're not using that sys.exit statement anymore we don't need this that's superfluous it's additional to our need So, is that now the problem complete? Reject return stage one. Yes, it does that. So this is the solution, or a solution, there's many ways of doing it, to that problem. Top marks. No. No, 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 no. This is really bad code. Why? It is lacking something lacking something very important and that is comments now a comment in Python uh, starts with a hash symbol anyone playing along at home who does programming you'll know why I just did the double slash 
so that is C and C++, uh, but it's a hash symbol, and you'll notice it's gone green. And I can type anything I want in here now. What does it do? Absolutely nothing. Anything in green is purely just words in a Word document type thing like that. And you can type in whatever you want. It will not execute. It's not code. It is just information. And that's really useful to anyone reading your code. Or to you reading your code tomorrow or next week or in a few years to try and remember what you did. So these three things that I've defined there are all flags. So I'm just going to call them flags. The next thing we wanted to do was, is the password between 6 and 12 characters long? Well that's what this while loop does. Between 6 and 12 characters long. Inclusive. So now this is a reminder to me that, that th that's what this is doing. Now I could add a comment above here saying input your password. Don't really need to do that because in this line it already says what we're doing. I could put one here to say oh now we're going to compute what the length of that password is. It's fairly self-explanatory because of what I've called these things. If I just called this A, alright, yeah, you would need some comments. Don't do that. Give things sensible names. And then the if statement, actually because we've written it that way and because we're printing out to the screen, for me to read that, it makes sense. Break. Might forget what that means. So I can put a comment in line here. So uh, leave this while loop and carry on below. There we are. What's this doing? Iterate through each char oops, character in turn. That's what the four, that's what this line's doing. What's this line doing? Check if the character is uppercase and not a digit. That's what that one does. This one, same but lowercase. There we are. So now, if we read through this, so what's this for loop doing? It's iterating through each character in turn. Ah, oh, okay, right, yeah. What's this if statement doing? Check if the character is uppercase and not a digit. Oh, okay. Ah, right, that makes sense. And if it is, we're going to set the flag. What's this one doing? Check if the character is lowercase and not a digit. Set the flag. Uh, this could be clearer. Nice way of making it clearer is add some white space. There we are. Just breaks that up a little bit. Awesome. What's this line doing here? Com or calculate really. Calculate the password strength. And then finally, out put the password strength 
to the screen. Oops. There we are. This is a lot clearer now. Now I can prove that that's not changed anything. There we are. Please enter password. It's not put flags on the screen. It's not put this on the screen. There we are. Awesome. So nothing's changed except our code is now a lot, lot clearer. A lot, lot clearer. The last thing we can do, and this is optional but good practice, is we can slightly optimise this code. We can make it run a little bit quicker. Now this is a very, very short bit of code, so it, it runs in the blink of an eye. But a good habit to get into. So let's have a think about what the code is doing here. Let's go down to this statement. If the character is an uppercase and not a digit, then we're going to do this. But if it's uppercase and not a digit, it can't be that, and it can't be that. So what's the point? Hmm. Well, there isn't a lot, really. So, why check it? Well, there's no point in checking it. It's using up computational time. So we can use another statement here, and that's ELIF, which stands for ELSE IF. So what that's doing is, if this is true, do this. ELSE, like we did here, we're going to run this. So if that's um, not true, we're going to do this. But this is also an if statement, so else if that. And if that's not true, then we're going to do this. Very, very minor change. But what it does is if this is true, then it's not going to bother doing any of this. It's just going to go straight back up and go to the next character. Equally, if that's false, it is going to check this. And if that's true, it's not going to bother with this one. And finally, if that's false, that's false, then it is going to check this. And back to the start. But there's a bit of logic missing here. What happens if all three are false? Ooh, good question. Well, we need an else. So if all three are false, um, invalid character. Oh, I forgot the print. There we are. So that tells us that we've not been able to pass the character. We can't, it's not uppercase, it's not lowercase, and it's not a digit. So we've got to do that. Now at that point, realistically, we want to go back to the top, but that's beyond upon, uh, what we've been asked to do here. So let's not worry about doing that, but it is useful to see if it ever pops up here. So that might have cut out a few loop cycles. Oh, we can do here. If the total is three, then it can't be two. So we'll do else if, or elif, and we'll do there. And now we've got a bit, bit of logic missing. Else, well, if it's not 3, 2, or 1, we've got a problem. Error in calculating password string. There we are. Now we've padded this out with some words, we've optimised it slightly so it runs a bit quicker, and it still does the problem exactly as we want. So, short password, nope, 
Please enter your password again. A long password. No. One that's the right length, but weak. One that's the right length, but medium. And one that's the right length, but strong. Problem complete. Hope you found that helpful. Nice introductory video. If you've got any comments, please leave them um, below. If you like this, if I'm going too fast, too slow, a bit of feedback from you guys would be really, really.